to write out electron configurations, um, we want to make a few adjustments. So we want to pretend that helium is right next to hydrogen. So I'm going to go ahead and move helium over there. But I'm highlighting in red those first two columns, including helium. That is our S block. Starting at boron, going down and over. This is now a nice block that we'll call the P block. So this middle section here, we will call the D block. And these two rows at the bottom, they make up our F block. Another thing that's going to be relevant is our rows. Uh, so straight across here is row 1, row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Something else to keep in mind, on your periodic tables, there's a light gray square and a dark gray square. Those light and dark grays correspond with these light and dark grays down here. Um, in reality, this whole section belongs shoved in here. It would just make our periodic table really long and it wouldn't fit on a piece of paper. Realize that this is still part of row 6. It goes right there. And this is still part of row 7. It goes right there. So, making sure we know what the blocks are. Um, electron configurations are giving us an address, so to speak, telling us where the electrons in an atom are most likely to be found. Um, we use this to tell us all sorts of different properties of the atom, but this video is just going to get down to how do you write an electron configuration. I'll make a different video that explains what it's all talking about and why it works. Um, we're going to be silly and we're going to pretend like we're playing Candyland. So key features of the game Candyland. You always start at the same point. There's one path and you follow it and you just follow, 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 follow. Um, you pick up a card, it tells you walk to this square, you walk to that square and you stop. That's the whole game, right? There are little shortcuts, those little bridges, candy, gumdrop, lane, whatever. We'll come back to those, those fit into this analogy also. But for now, always start at the same place, always follow the same path, stop when you get to the square you were told to stop at. Our starting point is always going to be just outside of hydrogen, right here. We're always going to move from left to right. If we get to the end of the periodic table and we have nowhere else to go, we'll come back and go left to right, left to right, left to right, all the way until we land on a square. So, for instance, if I want to write the electron configuration for sulfur, That means it's like I picked up the card that says sulfur, start at the start, and walk until you hit sulfur. Now, sulfur's electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. I didn't memorize that. I used my Candyland method to help get there. So, let me show you where that answer comes from. I started here. I always ask myself the same three questions. To figure out each of these terms, I'm asking the same three questions. What row am I in? What block? How many spaces? So I started here in the first row. Right now, I'm in the S block. And if I'm walking along this game board, there are one, two, hydrogen and helium, two spaces I can walk through. That gets me through helium. I look, there's nowhere else to walk through in that first row. So to continue on my path, I go down to the second row. I ask myself, what row am I in? Second. What block? S. How many spaces? One, two. Walking, 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 walking. I'm now in a new section, so I ask those questions again. Second row. But now I'm in the P block, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to walk. I've gotten to here. I'm not yet at sulfur, so I'm going to keep going. Here. Third row, S block, one, two spaces. Not yet at sulfur, so I keep going. That's a new area. Third row, P block. To get to sulfur, one, two, three, Four. We have to actually land on that space, four spaces. Um, it'll be a little different when we get to the D block and a little different when we get to the 
F block, but that's the general process. Um, realize each space is representing an electron. Uh, sulfur, if you look at the actual periodic table, sulfur has the number 16 in that square at the top. That means sulfur has 16 electrons normally. Um, two of its electrons are in this 1s area. We'll talk more about that. Two are here, six are there, two are there, four are there. So if you want to check your work, two plus two plus six plus two plus four should equal 16, or we did something wrong. Let me show you one more example. Um, instead of sulfur, Instead of sulfur, let's look at calcium. So, starting at the beginning, ask myself, what row? One. What, e what letter? S. How many spaces? Two. Nothing else in that row. Now I'm here. What row? Two. What letter? S. How many spaces? One, two. Next section, what row, what letter, how many spaces? That got me through neon. I'm not yet at calcium. Now I'm here. What row, three. What letter, S, how many spaces? Two. Still not at calcium, keep going. Third row, P block, six spaces. That got me through argon. Fourth row, S block, two spaces in, and I'll land on calcium. So my whole answer for the electron configuration for calcium would be that. Now, you'll notice once you do a bunch of these, they get repetitive. The beginning is always 1s2, 2s2. Um, because of that and because of how long it would take to do something like gold, imagine if calcium was that much rating, gold would be even more, there is something called the noble gas shortcut. So just like in Candyland, where if you land on that special square, you can skip a whole bunch of spaces and just keep going. Um, our noble gas shortcut allows us to, instead of starting at the start, start at any noble gas. So including helium, this last column, including helium, are our noble gases. If I want to write calcium but using the shortcut, I can go to the noble gas that comes before calcium, so backtracking. Argon is the last noble gas before calcium. I can, in brackets, write argon. That tells me, okay, skip everything and go to argon, and then keep going from there. After argon, I'm here, I write 4s2, and we're done. So if I say you can use the shortcut, that would be your answer for calcium. If I didn't say you can use the shortcut, that would be your answer. The reason this works, if you write out the electron configuration for argon, you would get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. That portion of it, is replaced by argon in brackets, and then the end should be the same. If you're double checking your work by looking at total number of electrons, it still works. Argon, the number on top for argon, is 18. So argon has 18 electrons, plus two gets us 20, and calcium, the number on top here, is 20. So that still accounts for all the electrons, we just didn't show them all. Some of them are hiding in that structure of argon. Uh, D block and F block. Um, what changes about the D block and the F block is the number, the coefficient in front of D or of F. So looking at one like tungsten. We're going to use the shortcut because there's no way I want to go that far on the periodic table without it. For tungsten, the noble gas before it would be xenon. After xenon, I'm here. That's the sixth row, the S block. Remember the S block ends after the 
second column. So there are still only two spaces in that S bluff. Then this light gray square tells me stop where you are, jump down here to the other light gray square, and go through the F block. I'm still in that sixth row, but for the F block, we change that number. Instead of being a six, it's going to be a four. So for the F block, the row number is going to be minus two. So the F block is going to be two less than the actual row we're in. So even though this is always part of the sixth row, anytime we're in this part of the F block, the number in front will be four. This is part of the seventh row, but the number in front will always be five in the S block. So for tungsten, I'd gone through six S2. The light gray tells me to come down to here. It's now four S and then however many across. So I'm going to start counting across. Um, if you actually count, you'll get 15. The reason why that's not accurate, these last two squares aren't part of the F block. They just got moved out of the way because they needed this light gray and dark gray square to remind you to use the F block. So LU and LR are not part of the F block. They actually live here and here, LU and LR. So after my 6S2, I come back down to the F block, 4F. If you count across now, it should be 14. It'll always be 14 in the F block unless we're stopping somewhere in there. And after YB, I now come back up and I'm going to do the D block. Just like the F block's number in front was different, the D block's number in front is different, but rather than being two less, for the D block, we just use the row number that is one less. So we're here. We did our detour. We come back to here. Still the sixth row, but I'm going to write five before I write D. And then, remembering to actually count this light gray square, if we're going to tungsten, it would be one, two, three, four. And I would be done. Let's say I were, instead of going to tungsten, I was continuing on and trying to get all the way to lead. When you count across the D block, so instead of tungsten, let's go to lead. Counting across the D block, there are 10 spaces now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now we're done with the D block. We're going on to the P block. There's nothing special about the P block, so we're going to use the number 6 because we're in the sixth row before we then write P however many spaces, and to get to lead, it would be two spaces. All right, a few more examples so you can watch me walk through the periodic table to write electron configurations. Um, let's do vanadium. I'm going to go ahead and use the shortcut, um, which means go to the noble gas before it, argon. After argon, 4s. One, two spaces. Now I'm about to enter the D block, which means instead of writing a four, even though I'm in the fourth row, I'm going to write a three. D, one, two, three for a minute. I'll do LB actually. For LB, using the shortcut, the noble gas before it is radon. Now I'm here, seventh row, S area, two spaces to go through. Since I hit the dark gray square, I go to the other dark gray square. I'm still in the seventh row, but I subtract two and write a five because we're in the F area. Counting across, we get 14. I come back to where I left off the beginning of that dark gray square. Seventh row, but we're in the D block now, so I subtract one and write a six. I'm sorry, F 14. Then six, D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then for the P block, nothing special about the number in front, so we're seventh row, F block, sorry, P block, one, two, three, four, six. Those are a couple more examples for you.